getting into the election. Um, and first, if you could just like kind of like give a little bit of background, you know, and like style of government, who's in power, the nature of some of the parties, you know, and just kind of give an overview of what's going on. Sweden is a constitutional monarchy. We have a parliamentary system. We have eight major political parties. The situation has been very precarious. There's a lot of the complicated relations between all of the differing parties about who they are okay working with and who they absolutely despise and will refuse to work with completely. 2018 was bad, right? We got a, a basically a hung parliament where it was more or less split down the middle and neither the left side or the right side could form a governing coalition because everyone hated each other and no one wanted to work together. And, um, and, and to clarify too, when you say like hung parliament that and like not, unable to form, you know, the government, this is means like there's no new legislation. There's no new budgeting yeah. that's going on. Like the, the business of running a country pretty much halts in a sense. Yes, it means no new prime minister. It means no government, no legislation. And the previous budget just carries on with no change. The first duty of parliament is to form a government, is to to vote for a prime minister. And um, basically it took two months in 2018 for that to even happen because uh, there was so much um, bickering and backs and forth. Can you kind of give to like who, which are the like, I guess, main parties that are kind of jockeying for power? And then this, I think it'll be a good flow into like... <laughs> why there's some concerning things about you know this recent election or at least the trends that are going on in sweden we can go through them real quick the left party previously known as the communist party of sweden they were part of the so-called euro communist movement which was like basically a precursor to what we today would call democratic socialism now the left party just calls themselves socialists they call themselves environmentalists and feminists they're the only party that is really against joining nato the Green Party is somewhat critical of it, but they don't seem to really mind it. The Green Party, uh, they're center-left environmentalists. Socially, they're progressive. You know, they support, like, standard Green Party environmentalist things. They like public transport, which the Left Party does too. Basically, all the things that are good about what the Green Party does, the Left Party also does, but usually better. And, you know, whether the Green Party is to the left of the Social Democrats, it varies. It depends on who you ask. Some would say that they're to the right of the Social Democrats, at least economically or fiscally. Yeah. Um, and again, Social Democrats is a big party, right? Yeah. Like, there is more left people in the Social Democrats and there's, like, also right, more right-leaning people in the Social Democrats. This is a very big party. Yeah, they're a big tent. Yeah, like, there, there are people who are social democrats who are, like, even, like, somewhat socially conservative. So, you know, on, on both on social issues and on economic issues, the Sweden, the social democrats vary a lot in, in yeah. kinds of people that are part of it. And, and like, the, also, I think one big reason social democrats is such a big tent, right, is because the history of Sweden has been very dominated by the social democrats, right? Like, they have, for a very long time, they were, like, the biggest, they were always in charge, and so on, and they're there's just just there's a lot of people who are apolitical that essentially just know that their family votes social democrats so they vote like I have so many of like people in my family like in extended family friends and so on which are just literally like well our family's always voted social democrats so yeah. you know that's what i'm doing yeah you know i mean social democrats have more or less led and dominated swedish politics for the past hundred years since 1921 so uh, it's hard to get away from that that history it's a fair to compare the social democrats to labor i would say take labor in the uk but then take like corbyn and momentum and like all of the like socialists in the labor party take them out and make a new party and that's the left party anyway uh center party and the liberal party it's really hard to tell them apart if I'm completely honest, nine times out of ten, they advocate for the same things. Socially, they're more progressive, a bit more friendly toward, like, immigration. Other than that, economically, they're very conservative. You know, free market, deregulation, decentralization, privatization, cut yeah. back on, like, spending and everything. Uh, L is better than C solely because of their new penis logo. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, if you look at the demographics of... 
the center party and the liberal party and you look at who votes for which party, you can kind of see that like women tend to vote for the center party uh, and people who live in the countryside tend to vote for the center party and men tend to vote for the liberal party, mostly men who live in cities. The moderates, they are um, also kind of big tent, a bit like the social democrats, but on the right, officially they're liberal conservatives. So they are conservatives with liberal tendencies, skeptical toward immigration. They want uh, more policing, more security cameras, uh, less money spent on wasteful things like education and healthcare and culture and music and, you know, tax that kind cuts, of thing. Tax cuts, tax cuts and more tax cuts, please. Yeah. Yeah, lower the taxes for rich people, raise the taxes for disabled people, but only kick some of the immigrants out because they're moderates. They're not radical. Mm -hmm. And then the Christian Democrats and the Sweden Democrats, they're more and more like blending into each other these days. They have very similar policies. They're both very conservative. They're both very anti-immigration, anti-feminist, that kind of thing. Economically, they're very similar as well, just like a standard conservative free market ideology. More policing and, uh, yeah, since 1991, uh, even before then, the Social Democrats have embraced uh, neoliberalism. More market reforms, decentralizations, privatizations, more markets when it comes to things like schools and education and everything. Thinking on some level that going toward the right would gain them votes, but it just kind of alienated their yeah, voter hollowing base. out um, the structures and institutions that people enjoy in their day-to-day -day lives isn't yeah, actually yeah. a good way to get votes. It's surprisingly, yeah. Weird. So Shocking. people have become uh, angry, frustrated, uh, understandably, with the the nature of the economy and the uh, you know eroding security uh, and social safety nets that people once had. People have lost trust in politicians and in the institutions of the state, which brings us to the second largest political party, the Sweden Democrats. Uh, represented here in yellow. Uh, it's the first time, again, probably since the 70s, since a political party besides the moderates have been the second biggest party. This election, the Sweden Democrats actually became the second largest political party in the country. And the Sweden Democrats are controversial for a whole host of reasons. It all basically boils down to the fact that they were founded by a Nazi SS volunteer. Most of the leading members uh, when the party was founded were neo-Nazis, had affiliations with National Front in the UK, the National Democratic Party uh, in Germany, the uh, David Duke's political organization uh, in the US, the whatever it's called, the something something for advancement of white people. Uh, yeah, they, they had ties to all those uh, friendly people. Yeah, they also voice support for was a golden dawn in Greece. So uh, fascist party. Yeah. Yeah. When was it they started like, you know, saying they weren't actually Nazis anymore? They were starting to do like this rebranding and that's around when they started gaining popularity. So that would have been almost like 20 years ago that they, they kind of started on this line that they're doing now. And and at that point, like it's, it's just progressively, they're trying to like shift their image, right? It's very dog whistly, like everything they do. But like back then they still had things like uh, race biology in their manifesto and stuff like that, which they have removed now. And like they have come out and say we're a zero tolerance for racism party and so on and just doing all these things to kind of like hide their yeah. past and what they really are but their politics like still of course like if you understand how they're dog whistling these things is very much the that they're still on that line uh and there has been a split off of them called alternative for sweden which is basically for the people who don't understand subtlety right <laughs> So, uh, and they, yeah. <laughs> so, so there's a very big discussion about like they say, oh no, we're not fascist, and they usually try to like redirect and say, well, we'll look at the history of the left wing parties. They were Stalinists and stuff like that. Nobody has clean hands, but their politics are very much still very reactionary, and their members 
the people that join the party have like Nazi backgrounds and are still Nazis, right? Like yeah. in the city, in municipal governments and so on. There was a study of like the 230 something politicians uh, that they investigated that had ties to like hate crimes and like, you know, slurs and anti LGBT, you know, harassment and the stuff like that. Like 200 of them are members of the Sweden Democrats. Well, shit. You know, here and then here comes the difficult part, right? Is that like you've got this party that is espousing all these things, a lot of dog whistles, you know, and or fog horns, and that you know, and come to where yeah, you have the votes, Sweden Democrats, the you know, I guess fascist to crypto fascist party is now the second biggest in Sweden, and it gained you know, you know, a few seats from where they were beforehand. Um, concerns. Yeah. You know what i guess like what's your take on <laughs> what's why this is happening and you know if you want to give any predictors as as far as like what the government will be formed like and you know what they're gonna end up doing as for the why if you look at um opinion polling on trust in politicians or trust in government all the parties are like you know like hovering like around the middle the sweden democrats stand out as as having extremely low trust in like politicians and and the government so a big part i think of why the sweden democrats are getting votes is because people it, it, it it's just like this this protest vote almost they hate politicians they hate the establishment you know whatever it is that's going on right now is not working and we need something new i think much like donald trump in the united states in 2016 i think people felt like you know we need an outsider we need someone who isn't a politician you know drain the swamp and all of that you know that was the kind of rhetoric that really got people excited and i think uh you see something similar with the sweden democrats where they are kind of positioning themselves as being like these outsiders and in a way the political establishment has kind of confirmed that they are the outsiders because for the longest time no matter how big the sweden democrats got even when they were the third largest political party and had considerable power in parliament basically every single political party said we're not going to work with you we are just going to pretend like you're not there we're not going to have you consult with us on budgets we're not going to have you part of a government we're not going to assign you any minister post you get nothing and that worked for a while while, but then eventually the Sweden Democrats were almost as big as the moderates. Now they're bigger than the moderates. So you can't really ignore them anymore. And, and I think that while I don't think that working with the Sweden Democrats would have solved anything or been a good idea, I do think that isolating them and shutting them out frustrated the voters of the Sweden Democrats and kind of confirmed to them that, okay, Everyone really does hate us. The political establishment really does hate us. But the left and the right, they are uniting against us. They're saying that we're the bad guys. Well, that must mean that we're onto something. Especially since also a, a big growth with the with the Supreme as as it sure says, right? Like people refuse to work with them, but then at the same time were legitimizing their talking points. The other parties were then kind of like giving the talking points the Sweden Democrats were talking about merit by themselves starting to repeat it. Like when the Syrian war stuff happened, we had, of course, like a wave of refugees coming in and the Sweden Democrats were talking about like closing the borders and so on. And when then eventually social democrats did do that that ended up legitimizing and and giving like well the Sweden democrats were right and you refuse to work with them so they they just keep kind of like stealing talking points and then legitimizing them in the public space while still shutting the Sweden democrats out while not working with them they still kept legitimizing their talking points by then adopting them themselves and bringing those things into the the public discussion like we have this discussion about like gang crime and so on which is a new thing that's popped up which originated from the Sweden democrats like needing to be tough on like this organized crime and stuff like that people are like oh it's the refugees that are causing these problems and then when you have the social democrats the moderates and and the other parties is repeating those things that originated from the Sweden Democrats while still shutting them out. It's just like, well, you're you're the petty ones that don't work with the Sweden Democrats, and the Sweden Democrats are the ones that are obviously right then because you're saying what they're saying, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, and I mean, 
if you're an American and you didn't feel a similarity in what that dynamic is like, <laughs> you know, um, although it's like the Democrats can't shut out Republicans and like they probably wouldn't even try wanting to. Um, yeah. yeah, when you start just validating these talking points and all this type of shit, like you just end up, you know, giving them a whole lot more uh, power in the in the public space. Yeah. And then they yeah. end up getting returned into them being, you know, being impossible to cut out, you know, um, at yeah. this point. A big topic for the election has been crime and drugs. And of course, that's tied in the same breath to immigration as a bit of a dog whistle. No one no one says outright that immigrants are criminals. I mean, some people do, but well, I mean, like, for, for the most that, part. That's how Trump started his <laughs> it's exactly. campaign for president, but uh, yeah, I guess yeah. others don't, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, but uh, there's been a, a large emphasis placed on, on this idea that Sweden has become riddled with gang crime, which statistically isn't true. Not that it doesn't exist, but the amount of fear mongering and uh, uh, the, the amount of time that has been spent talking about it is very disproportionate to how big of a problem it actually is. And obviously, you know, when you're doing like televised debates and so much of the election and what people find out about the candidates is just like snippets and sound bites, you're going to get kind of politics that's based on gut instincts and feelings. And that it's very much like Ben Shapiro gotcha clip. Oh, this politician owned yeah. that politician and stuff like that. You ba basically, you got every party, more or less, except maybe two of them, to take the line that, hey, our, we need more police. We need to be tough on crime. We, you know, we need uh, longer sentences, which is like, when you think about it for more than five minutes, and you, you realize that Sweden has a rehabilitatory justice system. Like, people who go to prison are supposed to be there until they're reformed. You're not supposed to just shuck someone in prison as a punishment. It's supposed to be for the purpose of rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. But it sounds really good on television when you say that we need to give 10 extra years to people who are affiliated with gangs and things like that. It doesn't make any sense from the point of view of like rehabilitation because how long it takes for someone to be rehabilitated depends on the person. You can't just decide, well, okay, it's yeah. going to take exactly and 10 years for you to get rehabilitated. Also, it's like if this is if it's off of gang affiliation, maybe relocation, <laughs> you know, uh, it was because like you could you could fix gang affiliation immediately by having a person like not in the same area where the gang is operating. And then that person is yeah. no longer affiliated with the gang, you know, like, yeah, it has nothing but to do with like, <laughs> oh, if we lock them up in 10 years and this is like the thing that's like, I think it's like kind of an issue. And I don't, you know, I have no idea what like the what. Swedish prisons are in like, because that's where too, it's like where a good so segment of drug, you know, quote unquote crimes or drug activity is in prisons. You know, the United States prison system, you can get all sorts of shit. It's literally part of the trade in and of itself. And people are still able to make decisions out, you know, from prison. So, you know, I guess still only to say this to like make the point that the idea that adding on longer sense, you know, sent sentences and stuff like that, and especially in a system that, you know, does more rehabilitation than the United States prison system. It really doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I mean, like, our prison system is literally called criminal care. It's nothing like the American prison system in, in that regard. And then when it comes to, like, this whole, like gang crime and so on right while you might have uh, in the u.s right people know about like specific gangs and and people calling themselves a gang and so on right that is never the case in sweden right who is the ones defining what gang if they're in a gang or not right because this is never talked about it is just like this crime is happening in this area so it's gang crime so it's like who is it that determines what is a gang crime and what is not a gang crime and that's never been established right it is just this there is gang crime we need to give them double sentences and, and and so on so that's like also a big problem right and a further thing that i think is just being used to target certain areas specifically oh, yeah. that have more immigrants and so on so to that you know if we can turn to you know how strong is like the left party is there any you know hope to kind of start battling against what the Sweden Democrats are doing? What it comes down to is, um, are the liberal centrists going to be more willing to work with a socialist party or the Nazis? And that question is kind of up in the air at the moment because it could go either way. They've both positioned themselves as being like 
anti-extremist. They are of the belief that the left party are socialists and they want, you know, health care. And then you got the Nazis who want to kick out immigrants and they're equally bad. That's and we want to work with neither of them. Yes. Essentially, both the center party and the liberals have promised that they're not going to work with the left party and they're not going to work with Sweden Democrats. But I mean, if you look at the distribution of the seats, it's so split down exactly the middle that they are going to have to pick a side. Yeah, something's got uh, something's got to give. Yeah. Mm. And what happened in 2018 was the Social Democrats and the Greens formed a minority government. They gave concessions to both the left and to the center party. So left party, Social Democrats, Greens and center party. Together they could get a majority in parliament. But now the right wing bloc, so the liberals, Christians, moderates and Sweden Democrats, they have one seat more than the left bloc. So to me, the most important player for like what is going to happen going forward is the liberal party uh -huh. and whether they are going to swallow their pride and support a center left government and, and allow them to form a government with a social democratic prime minister, or if they are going to work with the Sweden Democrats just because they hate socialism that much that they would rather work with the social national conservatives. Yeah. Which I like, yeah. I guess like, like I'm kind of curious too, because Kind of like the, the idea of social democracy and how do you move left from there? You know, like historically, you know, it's like <laughs> once countries have kind of like gotten the, 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 you know, the lane of social democracy, it's like it's, it's you know, that's where they're fucking going. And then over time, capital being able to take more and more control back. So, yeah, yeah, what are some of the positions on the left party? Is it more about like kind of, uh, I guess, in a sense, conservative <laughs> or i.e. in a way of going back to a stronger social democracy? PF. Or, yeah, is, is there a more radical, you know, or a more substantive change that they're looking to push forward? I mean, I don't, I don't know, like uh, if you if you'd like to compare the left party with something that people would know about, compare the left party to like the DSA an example that's kind of where they are i mean like they're more like what the social democrats used to be back in the day and people look at like europe europe and stuff like that that has this social democratic tradition and a lot of like i hear a lot where people say you're closer to things like socialism than we are in america and i fundamentally don't agree right because our labor movements have fundamentally been defeated a long time ago through social democracy like our unions are not our own anymore and stuff like that class consciousness in that regard is very much tied up to the status quo so there's not as much possibility to move outside of the status quo of the swedish system in like the public's mind and there's more of that in the united states right people are forming their own unions and so on and that work that happened a long time ago in sweden that's already been crushed and then brought into the status quo is just kind of like starting again now in the u.s i don't know what you think about that issue yeah no i mean i agree the role of social democracy historically is to declaw the labor movement, is, is to offer up a friendlier version of capitalism and to, to basically get the, the radicals to, um, to simmer down, to not ask to change the system too much. There were times in Swedish history when some, some people really truly believed that social democracy could be a road to, you know, like a post-capitalist socialist society. But somewhere along the line, the goal shifted from that kind of visionary utopian, you know, the, the idea of uh, Folkhemet, the people's home, uh, which was an old idea from the 50s, um, toward a, a much more, um, oh, people should have, you know, good wages and healthcare, education should be good, but nothing like beyond that, you know, like people should live comfortable lives in a capitalist system. And, you know, all of these like radical unions, the syndicalists and anarchists and communists, they're terrorists. They are a danger to democracy. They're a threat. So we need to ban all of these radical political organizations. So, you know, it, it's almost a bit of a parallel to like union busting and, and uh, the Red Scare in the United States states only like we have unions but they're very passive unions they create a you know a, a collective bargaining agreement that is fine but they don't really struggle uh, and because it comes from from this um, class collaborationist perspective 
that mm. the goal of the left, the goal of unions, the goal of like labor and political activism is not to struggle against the bourgeoisie, the ruling class and the capitalist. The goal is to like be civil, sit down, have a discussion, shake hands, come to, you know, a mutual agreement and be best friends. Like that, that is the, the, the fundamental truth of how a social democratic society operates. And you yeah, see so... This Things like uh, like employers associations, like getting the same status as uh, you know labor unions, like yeah, mm. yeah, and then that's where it's like it's um, understanding it's like it's still capitalism, um, and like you see yeah. like you declaw some of these things, you know, it's like you talk about the prison system, I'm sure okay, like homelessness and healthcare rates and all these things are much better in Sweden, <laughs> much better in Sweden than the United States. Low, low bar uh when it comes to uh the u.s but then like also too of like where does where does this leave you know the populace and especially you know moving forward where um you know grander scale things you know a lot of these you know social uh social democracies are still like attached <laughs> you know to other full-on capitalist societies you know and like that's where too like you know, through nato how much uh deference and legitimacy is handed over to you know like the U.S. and its exploits you know across the world and all that type of shit. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. yeah um, <laughs> and and when it comes to like just just I mean just you ask so where's the organizational ground like in Sweden right now? It's it's bleak. It's really bleak because we have communist parties in Sweden, but they kind of live in the past. Sweden is a post-industrial society. The industries that we used to possess in Sweden and so on are not there anymore. They, these goods and stuff are produced elsewhere and our communist party is still kind of very stuck in like, oh, the factory workers and stuff. Like, There's no factory workers anymore. Like, you know, yeah. they, they don't exist, right? They're not here. Um, yeah, fine. It's yeah. like basically, like, this is like something with like the United States is... <laughs> As they're not being able to sell F thirty fives because it's got too much like Chinese uh, materials in it, you know, they're starting to <laughs> like realize like, oh, hey, just basing this whole economy of like quote unquote financial services, you know, <laughs> it, it isn't yeah. it isn't the same as it, you know it used to be, and especially I mean like held Biden the other day he was in ohio was breaking ground in like this this new uh semiconductor factory you know, we used to have such a big manufacturing base in this country and then something happened in the 90s and it's like that thing that happened <laughs> was like nafta the trade deal that you joe biden helped craft yourself you know yeah and it's yeah. like here we are. this guy's like we're all looking for the guy who did this exactly. um, <laughs> yeah. i mean that that is the the electoral strategy of the social democrats as well like this election campaign one of the big things they've been talking about like the school system is terrible you got all these like private charter schools making a bunch of profits off of taxpayer money you know who came up with that idea well it was the social democrats yeah in like the 80s the, like they did yeah. that that was their yeah. idea. But like one of the big problems with social democracy and, you know, some people, especially I think if you live in a country like the United States and you see a country that has, you know, good healthcare system or better healthcare system and, and education, free education and so, you know, social safety nets and these kind of things. And you might be tempted to think that, well, you know, who cares if it's capitalism? Fundamentally, the problem with social democracy and, and reformism is that you're working from within a liberal democratic system where you campaign and you work really hard and you push through some reforms and it's great for like 10 years. But eventually, you know, because you live in capitalism and because the liberal democratic system that you live under is designed to favor the economic base, those reforms that the working class fights and dies for, they're eroded over time. If you don't have any kind of plan to defend these reforms that you've worked so hard for, besides just, oh, well, everyone just has to vote harder next time. The result is that the social democrats became huge you know in the 1920s and throughout the 20th century they were huge and they pushed through some great reforms that really made people's lives better until suddenly they weren't in power anymore and then over the span of like 10 20 years a lot of that was just done away with just poof which kind of shows you how fragile social democratic workers reforms really are because it's it's not a systemic change that is done they're reforms that are very easily replaceable and done away with they're not ingrained into society as a whole
Yeah, I mean, there's a slight shift in class interest that happens, right, while something like the middle class is not technically like a real class, right? There is this, through the through the improvement of kind of like the conditions that workers live in, right, when, when people end up in situations where they're able to work and they get adequate like pay to, to like a living wage and able to like buy a home and, and stuff like that, these concessions, right, skew use the interest or eventually these people then are looking for other things through the the system which very much fits in line with the the capitalist right because instead of people looking for uh for example better working conditions which they already have then they're looking for more right then they're looking for the tax cuts they're looking for these things which eventually led into like the neoliberalism where people are asking themselves right like i want even more now and where do we get that from and that's when like you know they start slicing off all these institutions that has been built up and owned by the people one thing about the sweden democrats is that a lot of them are former social democrats the so sweden democrats are generally speaking not like middle class a lot of them are rural but like a good chunk of them are people who are are union members and union workers who used to be members of the social democrats but who have seen their standard of living fall you know through neoliberalism and, and erosion of this social democratic society that that existed and you know they vote for the social democrats over and over again the social democrats are always in the government over and over again but everything just continues to get worse every time. Then in 2008, the conservatives get in. So it's like, well, holy shit, finally something something new, right? But then they just kind of make everything worse again, just like the Social Democrats did. So now you have a ton of people who, like I said earlier, are angry and frustrated. They hate the establishment. They don't trust politicians. And the only people they can find that are like outside the establishment who are telling them like, hey, no, you're right. Things were better before. We're going to go back to the way things were. We're going to make sure that people can lead good lives again are the, the Nazis, the Sweden Democrats, who are saying like, we're going to protect you. We're going to protect your job. We're going to protect your wage from the immigrants because they're the real culprits of this whole thing. It's not the neoliberalism. Um, it's not privatization. It's the fact that there are so many brown people in this country. Mm -hmm. And people fall for that because they've been voting for the Social Democrats. They've been voting for the conservatives. And no matter who they vote for, no matter who's in government, nothing seems to change. Yeah. No, I mean, I think, too, is a good point of, like, even looking back in the United States and even what um, FDR and a lot of the, the New Deal policies and everything like that, you know, like what you're seeing is a large shift towards social democracy that like obviously fell well short and then you know after that yeah you're just like the the the, the repeal of all of the win or a lot of the the wins and 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 liberties that were fought for and even like going on after like the civil rights movement and everything like that um and that's where it too was like i believe like fdr even said it himself it was like you like he was there to save capital you know that's yeah. that's you know really having that understanding of declawing capital to save it is not the same as making people's lives better <laughs> transitioning through capitalism which that's really kind of the mindset you know in my opinion they need to be dealing with it's not that certain programs or certain transitional programs can't exist it's just that if your base right if the foundation that you're building upon is still the capitalism <laughs> is 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 okay then it's never you're never going to get to where you think you want to go it's you know it's always going to be able to be co-opted and taken back it has like a lot of to do with like who do who remains in charge of these movements because like in, in the united states and in, in many countries there there's immediate things that needs to be addressed right and and there is like the path is like lit forward to go in the way of handing your power over to capital that is what happens with with these labor movements and so on right because you have to you have to address kind of immediate things you have a housing crisis you have all these things right and the way people are taught to seek improvements is through the system, is through the status quo, right? But yep. once you enter in and then intertwine yourself with the status quo, right, you fundamentally hand over things and things can get better, right? But as we say, there's an erosion in that. It doesn't last forever. And especially at a time like now, when there's other pressing things that wasn't like climate crisis and so on looming, where you don't have the time to wait 
for the erosion because things will get worse, especially when you have like crisis capitalism and people taking event advantage of these shocks in in the economy to then uh, to then for these things. So like when it comes to building movements and stuff like that, it has to remain in control within the workers right and that requires uh like the organization that's happening in in the united states and so on for all these movements to connect right instead of individually seeking into like the state right like uh, because then you know certain groups get like bought off for for like you know within their individual field their professions and so on right and then used to pit against each other and so on so that needs to be connected moving forward and that way you don't have to let go of the immediate problems because that is what people are scared of right if we don't seek the aid through the state how do we address the immediate problem because i can't wait for like a revolution and stuff that's what people constantly think about like you're a dreamer dreaming of revolution this this flip and stuff like that but that is not the only way to address these problems like we have the power as laborers and so on to unite with each other and address these things without having to intertwine ourselves with uh, the status quo yeah no and that's like the thing it's like what's hard is in the Imperial Corps, you've got such a large swath of the community who's able to say, you know, state, help me, and they get the help that they need, you know, or you get they get enough help to shut the fuck up, mm -hmm, right? Yeah. They don't get the help yeah. they need. They get enough help to be quiet. And who's really at expense a lot of that help, right? You know, this global south. <laughs> um, and, and but yeah. the, the thing is, getting to the point, like you mentioned, right, of with the climate crisis, there's no more time. We don't have a whole lot of time. And these type of crises with the flooding in Jackson, Mississippi, people shouldn't, at least I th I'm hoping more people understand what people mean when they say systemic racism. The only thing is like, what are the actual ways to stop this? And that is, you know, a system in which guarantees <laughs> all the necessities for everyone, you know, full stop, you know, and that's it. And that way you could still have racist people, right? You could still have people that might, you know, want to call me the N word, but if they don't have any power to deny me access to, you know, the things that I need in life or housing or a job and education, if they don't have the ability to deny me these things, then they're just an asshole screaming, right? But we still live in a system where hundreds of thousands of black people can't get clean water. And that's things like, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough because yeah, the army Corps of engineers isn't at my disposal or it's not the disposal of like the DSA or PSL, all of the people who do that work that replace the pipes and all of the th people, you know, all of those things, those are people in our communities. Those are people that, you know, are in our grocery stores with us. Those are not the people that are jet setting around the world and that type of connection, like you were saying, once that's made, then we can start doing things for ourselves. Shall we still be slaves and work for wages? It is outrageous, has been for ages. Oh, this earth by rights belongs to toilers and not to spoilers of liberty. The master class is small, but they have lots of gold. When we unite to gain our rights, if they resist, we'll use our might. There is no middle ground. This fight must be won round to victory for liberty. Our class is marching on. Shall we still?